Recently, we covered a story about how the formation of the Earth may have been very different from the currently accepted model. The whole question of how planets form is still a very large mystery, with plenty of contradictory evidence. There are a whole series of alternative models, all with their pros and cons. In the accepted model, planets form slowly from material around it. Water is composed of a series of different isotopes of hydrogen, and some of it is called heavy water. The ratio of the heavy water to the normal water is like a fingerprint. It assumes, therefore, that the planets should have the same ratio of this locked into their core and mantle. It was therefore a great shock when scientists analysed samples of meteorites from Mars and discovered that they had different ratios, implying the water on Mars came from different sources, posing a serious problem for the accepted formation model. Let's examine this in more detail. We know from examination of the surface features of Mars that it was a warm and wet planet in the past, before its atmosphere was stripped away, changing the conditions on Mars forever. So how did this water get onto Mars? In order to understand this, we need to study the layers of Mars. This can be done through analysing various meteorites from Mars that have landed on Earth. It is believed that the crust contains the largest reservoir of water, there are two famous meteorites that are being studied, the Black Beauty and the Allen Hills meteorite. When they analysed the composition of these two meteorites, they discovered that there was a striking difference between these two samples. When we examine the ratio of heavy water on Earth, it remains constant from the rocks in the various layers right into the oceans. These two meteorites therefore suggest two different sources of water in Mars's interior. In order to explain this, the scientists postulate that two large planetesimals with different water compositions collided and never fully mixed. This is very different to the current theory on the formation of Mars and the formation of other planets. Now they draw two important conclusions from this data. Firstly, that the crust remained much the same over time. Secondly, that the crust samples seem to have a very consistent water ratio but were wildly different from the mantle below. During their analysis, the researchers discovered two different types of Martian volcanic rock. Some were enriched with heavy water and some were depleted of heavy water, meaning they contained evidence of water from different hydrogen isotopes. The lead scientist commented, when you mix the two proportions of hydrogen from these two kinds of rocks, you can get the crustal values. Well, this is quite convenient and rather obvious that you could create any mixture with either of these two extremes. Their concept is therefore that parts of the mantle remained separated after the initial formation process and did not mix. The question is why would we see this on Mars and not on Earth? Why was Mars's formation process so different? And why did the mantle not mix if it was caused by a collision? If this collision was slow enough not to melt the mantle, why would Mars end up being as spherical as it is? When we examine the surface of Mars, there is clear evidence of electrical arcing, removing and depositing material across vast swathes of the surface. The scarring is so prolific that one half of the planet is significantly lower than the other. Could these arcing events have changed the ratio of the heavy water in the rock sample? If these events melted the rock and it was excavated, would this resemble what they would call volcanic rock? As this material was being ejected, it was also thrown outwards and potentially some towards Earth. These rocks would then resemble what we would call meteorites. Conventional theory tells us the only way that this could have got from Mars to Earth is if something large struck Mars and something flew off. From Sapphire we know that transmutation can take place. Is this what this evidence is showing us? Again, if we examine the ratio of heavy water across the solar system, an interesting pattern starts to appear. On Earth, it is about 1.49. If we examine Mars's crust, then we see that it is 2.68 to 5.73. In the mantle, the highest would be around 8, and the lowest that they recorded was just below 2. Now when we examine the ratio of heavy water across other parts of the solar system, you will start to notice something interesting. 
Firstly, we see that Mars sits above the Earth line. Secondly, we see Enceladus above this line as well. As you know, we suspect that Enceladus is undergoing electrical arcing on the surface. Could this be the same cause for the higher isotope ratio here? We also see that the objects that sit above Earth's line are all comets. And again, here we suspect that these are all undergoing electrical stressing events, and arcing is occurring, and therefore is transmutation causing a change in the ratio that we observe. As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.